Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 213th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Alright, and to start off, there's a lot I need to cover in this week's episode, and that can mostly be attributed to the fact that I took last week off from recording this series because of the all-new untethered iOS 8 through 8.1 Pangu Jailbreak Utility, and I'm going to be discussing that throughout the duration of this episode. And before we get into that, I just wanted to say that I have released six new videos since the last installment to this series. So if you're on the main page for this video, just be sure to click my channel name below. From there, you'll be taken to my channel and you can watch through all of my recent coverage. You can also find all of them detailed down below in the more info. And also, toward the end of this episode, I'm going to answer a few questions that I received from you guys, my viewers, on not only Twitter, Facebook, but also Instagram. I'm also going to tell you guys how you can have your questions answered in next week's episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. And up first, we actually have the all-new untethered jailbreak. Pangu has released a number of updates to their iOS 8 jailbreak utility since its initial release, which by the way, let me back up and say that it was definitely mostly intended for developers as it simply enabled root access on a device. So from there, jailbreak developers could update their tweets or create new tweets for iOS 8. Well, since then, actually on October 31st Halloween, Pangu released their all new untethered one click jailbreak utility that's bundled with Cydia, and also thanks to a number of Cydia updates from Saric, devices will no longer experience boot loop complications. And if you want to ensure that your device does not enter a boot loop and you jailbroke it using Pangu a while ago, then just be sure to open up Cydia. From there, you can go to the Changes tab down below at the bottom and tap on Refresh. And once Cydia has grabbed all the latest data, if you see a 1, 2, or really any number in a red badge on the Changes tab, then you know that you have to install the updates available in order for your device to function properly. And while some of the updates may be related to tweaks you've installed, if you have any essential updates, be sure to install them immediately as they will ensure that you don't encounter any complications with the jailbreak. Like I previously stated, both Saric and Pangu have done a lot of work to ensure that nothing negative really happens post jailbreak. And if for whatever reason your device is currently experiencing boot loop complications, you will unfortunately have to restore. And to do that, just plug in via USB cable, launch iTunes, and then enter either recovery or DFU mode. I recommend recovery mode because all you have to do is hold down the home and power buttons together for a total of about 15 seconds. From there, you should receive an iTunes logo on the screen of your device, and you will be able to actually restore inside of iTunes itself, and then you can jailbreak and restore from your backup. Again, you don't have to worry about the order too much this time around because you will not experience any boot loop complications with the latest version of Cydia. And speaking of Cydia, as well as Cydia tweaks, I also created a top 10 Cydia tweaks video in collaboration with Jeremy from iDevice Movies. I also included three bonus tweaks in my installment of the video series, so if you're interested in eight of my favorite tweaks, be sure to watch through my video and follow it up with Jeremy's for even more tweaks. And if you've been waiting to jailbreak, don't wait too long as Apple will indeed release iOS 8.1.1 to the general public, and it actually does patch the Pangu Untethered jailbreak. But before we get into that, let's start with what iOS 8.1.1 offers and brings to the table. Essentially, it merely increases performance for older devices such as the iPhone 4S and the iPad 2. It also rectifies some minor bug complications, nothing too significant, however, but it does patch the iAdmin exploit that Pangu utilizes to essentially deliver the jailbreak data. So essentially what that means is that the current iteration of Pangu will not be capable of jailbreaking any iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad model, again running iOS 8.1.1. And if you want additional details on that, including what the firmware actually has to offer and what we can expect from it, then just be sure to check out my recent video where I cover not only iOS 8.1.1, but also how it regrettably affects jailbreaking. So again, more details pertaining to the upcoming iOS 8.1.1 update can be found in that video. And now next up, I want to answer a question that I've received a lot as of late. And remember, I will answer even more questions toward the end of this episode. And that question that I'm actually referring to right now is when will Pangu release their untethered jailbreak utility for Mac OS X? And the answer to that question is actually relatively soon. On Wednesday, the team said that they're planning on releasing a utility shortly. However, they will need, quote, a couple of 
of days to update everything. Keep in mind that because of iOS 8 and because Apple has changed so many things with the latest major firmware installment, they've had to do a lot beyond just creating the jailbreak. As many of you who have been a part of the iOS 8 jailbreak and early adopters of it have experienced. So just give them some time to bring Pangu over to Mac. However, hopefully it won't take too long because of course Apple is planning on releasing 8.1.1 in the foreseeable future. I actually wouldn't be surprised if it's released next week even. So if you don't want to wait and you want to ensure that you can successfully jailbreak, because of course Pangu does function best with a device that was freshly restored, then either try to borrow a PC from a friend or install Windows on your Mac through either Bootcamp Assistant or a virtual machine. There are numerous tutorials online for both methods. And now in addition to everything covering jailbreaking as of late, I wanted to discuss unlocking iPhones. Now this week I also created an in-depth unlocking guide that does go over the three major forms of iPhone unlocks. But first, if you don't know what an iPhone unlock is, essentially it's fundamentally different than a jailbreak. The two do not rely on one another, although there is one type of unlock that does require a device to be jailbroken. It no longer functions on the newest iPhone models, running the latest firmware, with the latest baseband, so that's pretty much irrelevant at this point. So essentially the two are independent from one another, and what unlocking does is it essentially allows you to use your iPhone on other carriers besides the one it was initially locked to. So if you purchase an iPhone in a contract that was subsidized, you would essentially be able to not only use it overseas on prepaid carriers, but you'd also be able to switch networks entirely if you so desired to. And now I'm definitely not going to detail everything related to unlocking in this week's episode, that's why I created created a dedicated video on it. So if you want more information on unlocking your iPhone and you're interested in using it on another network besides the one it's currently locked to, if it even is locked to a network that is, then just be sure to check out that video. Of course, I will have it linked to down below in the more info. And now next up in a slight reprieve from jailbreak and unlocking related news, I wanted to talk about a new report that did originate from a Taiwanese site that suggests that Apple may be testing glasses-free 3D technology for implementation in the next generation iPhone. The site also states that Apple plans on laying the groundwork for an advanced 3D quote hardware and software ecosystem. Additionally, the source seems to suggest that the quote naked eye 3D screen couldn't possibly be built using the current embedded touchscreen display technology that Apple has utilized and built into their mobile smartphone displays since the launch of the iPhone 5 in 2012. And it's definitely far-fetched to say the least, but given Apple's pre previous patent interest in 3D display technology, it could very well be possible, including their patents that detail glasses-free, stereoscopic 3D displays, and a 3D quote hyper-reality display, which is similar to the parallax effect that was introduced in iOS 7 that essentially can shift the assets on the display based on the device's orientation. So what are your thoughts on a glasses-free 3D display in the next iPhone? Let me know down below in the comments section. Amazon's tried it with their Amazon Fire Phone. It hasn't really seemed to work out too well for them, and it appears to be more of a fad, at least to me, but let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear them again in the comments. And now next up, I wanted to discuss the other two videos that I have made in addition to the ones that I've previously outlined in this episode so far. So the first of which was actually another jailbreak tutorial that was an update on my original guide, which at the time did not install Cydia. So this one was kind of a bundle with Cydia and with the jailbreak in general, utilizing Pangu. And then the next one actually detailed the passcode fix. So initially, once you jailbroke using Pangu, you would not be able to set a passcode. And if you did, and if you decided to reboot your device, Device, it would enter an infinite boot loop, forcing you to restore. Thankfully, that's no longer an issue, and if you want details on any of the things outlined in either of those videos, again, links to both can be found down below. And now let's get into some of the questions that I've received, again, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This week, prior to recording this episode, I actually asked on all three social media services whether you guys had anything you wanted me to address in this episode. And because you did, I'm going to answer them. And actually next week, I will also do the same thing. And so if you want your question answered in the upcoming episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors, just be sure to check out my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram pages next week. Links to those again can be found below. So up first, I wanted to address probably one of the more interesting questions, at least in my opinion, and that's related to the Apple Watch 
and whether you'd be able to jailbreak the device and if so, what that would look like. So let's get into that. And before we need some background information. So essentially the Apple Watch does require an iPhone to function. It needs to be paired with it. There's no question about that. And it will function on the iPhone 5, iPhone 5S, iPhone 5C, iPhone 6, and the iPhone 6 Plus. Also, it is slated for release sometime in early 2015. Apple has yet to specify when, however, but early rumors started to peg the date around Valentine's Day of 2015. From there, another set of rumors kind of pushed the date back a little bit to somewhere around spring, and now we're back full circle to where we started, and we have new rumors suggesting that the Apple Watch will be released closer to Valentine's Day, again in February of 2015. So with that understood, it's important to mention that at that time, once the device is released, there will not be a jailbreak. The Pangu untethered jailbreak will have been patched for quite some time. So unless either Pangu or the evaders decide to release a new jailbreak utility, we won't have an iPhone that's jailbroken. And because the iPhone will undoubtedly require a software update to function with the Apple Watch, because Apple has yet to bake the Apple Watch requirements into iOS, it will regrettably force an update that does result in the loss of the iPhone's jailbreak. But it will be really interesting to see what happens, and I will say that once the next untethered jailbreak utility is released and we have the Apple Watch in hand, there's no doubt that there will be some sort of tweak or modification that does further the integration between the two, and that will actually improve the features of the Apple Watch and the iPhone for that matter. Speaking from personal experience, as most of you know, I do use a Pebble Steel smartwatch and there's actually a jailbreak tweak or modification inside of Cydia called Smartwatch Plus that does allow you to do various things from the Pebble Watch that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. And if you happen to watch my top tweaks video more toward the beginning of this episode, you will know all about Activator, which allows you to set up custom actions and triggers. Well, essentially with Smartwatch Plus, you can activate said actions actions from your Pebble Steel smartwatch. So there's no question that there will be some sort of implementation of jailbreak related features into the Apple Watch. It's a question and a matter of when and what happens with the jailbreak next after Apple patches it with iOS 8.1.1, which of course they will inevitably do. It's only a matter of time. Once the firmware is released, we will no longer be able to jailbreak iPhone, iPad, or iPod touch models. And of course, because the Apple Watch does require an iPhone to function properly, We'll just have to see what happens in the future with jailbreaking. Now, speaking of jailbreaking, beyond Pangu for Mac, I received a number of questions related to whether Pangu and the jailbreak in general are safe. It's crucial to understand what it means to jailbreak, and on a fundamental level, that's simply enabling root access. That's basically all Pangu does, aside from installing the dependencies that Cydia requires to function properly, and Cydia is actually just the graphical third-party distribution platform for various tweaks. So Cydia is how the average everyday user will be able to install tweaks on their device, and jailbreaking enables root access. That's basically all there is to it. And Pangu does a great job of that. It provides a complete untethered jailbreak on all iPhone, iPad, and iPod touch models, running iOS 8.0 through 8.1 and nothing more. It doesn't install anything else. So it's absolutely great. It's an awesome time to jailbreak. Don't miss out. If you're thinking about jailbreaking or you're at all concerned, definitely don't be. Jailbreak now, it all really depends on the tweaks that you install. Just be careful when looking through Cydia. Everything that's available on the default repositories, however, will be safe and will be fine. Just don't add any third-party repos if you're unsure and don't install anything from said repositories. So with that covered, I also wanted to talk about evasion and whether the evaders will update evasion for support on iOS 8. Well, as I just outlined, Pangu's already achieved root access on iOS 8 for all iDevices. They've already done it. They've already created a jailbreak for iOS 8. There's essentially no need for the evaders to release an iOS 8 through 8.1 jailbreak utility, at least right now. Things will definitely change once Apple releases iOS 8.1.1 to the general public, and then from there, everything's up in the air and we'll see what happens between Pangu and between the evaders. Of course, I will keep you guys completely updated on not only that, but also the development status of Pangu 
for Mac OS X. So just be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have yet to. Just be sure to click the subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you're on the main page for this video. Of course, you can also navigate to my channel and click subscribe there. Follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook. Next up, I wanted to discuss the Wire Lurker malware that has come to the attention of a number of different security experts and was actually publicized throughout the news circuit as of late. So there's a lot of misconceptions surrounding Wire Lurker and what it actually is. Some people were saying that only jailbroken devices are vulnerable and that they're actually more vulnerable than non-jailbroken devices. That's not true. That couldn't be further from the truth. Essentially, it's important to understand what it actually is and it hardly affects anyone. So essentially, WireLurker has to infect a Mac first and then from there, once an iDevice is plugged into the computer and synced to, it is vulnerable and it is exposed to the WireLurker malware. Of course, as the name itself would suggest. What's more, Apple has not only blocked WireLurker on Macs, but you actually had to install an app from a third-party Chinese app store, actually. There were apparently 400 reported instances of apps being infected by this WireLurker malware. So again, it hardly affects anyone. If you're not using any sort of shady third-party Chinese Mac app store, you're definitely safe and you won't be affected right now. And the next question is related to clarification concerning the complications with certain iPhone 6 Plus and and iPhone 6 models. So apparently it was publicized earlier this week that Apple has switched from using TLC flash or triple level cell to MLC or multi-level cell flash storage in the 64 gigabyte iPhone 6 and 128 gigabyte iPhone 6 Plus. Now apparently this move and switch was to rectify the random crashes and boot loops that select iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus models had been experiencing. Now personally, I own an iPhone 6 Plus and I have yet to notice anything. Whether or not it stays that way though is still to be determined. The issues could propagate in the future, and if that's the case, then all you have to do is actually go into Apple, go to Apple Care, and get your iPhone replaced. It's not really that big of a deal, and again, most iPhones aren't actually affected, at least right now. So with that said, the final question is related to tweaks inside of City. I can't tell you how many different people have asked me when tweak developers will update their packages for complete native support on iOS 8. And unfortunately, that's an impossible question to answer because it does differ for every single jailbreak developer. It depends on what their plans are, whether or not they actually plan on updating the utility, and if they have other utilities they need to address first. So with that said, the best way to check if your favorite tweak has been updated for support on iOS 8 is just to keep an eye on it. All right, and that's pretty much everything I wanted to discuss in this week's episode. Also, there are some really awesome updates to free app life coming soon. Stay tuned for those. I am planning on making a dedicated video as well. And if you guys want more information on anything discussed in this week's episode, again, everything can be found linked to down below in the more info. And if you want your questions answered in next week's episode, just be sure to keep your eye on not only Facebook, Twitter, but also Instagram, I will ask prior to recording next week's episode if you guys have anything you want me to address. And with that said, if you guys like this video, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comment's been posted, visit bit.ly forward slash get free app life or just freeapplife.com inside of mobile Safari. If you're on iOS 8, after tapping download, press the home button, open the app, and download and install the temporary secure profile, which is actually never fully installed on your device as it's immediately deleted once your account has either been created or reassociated. From there, simply download sponsored apps for points, refer friends for even more, and use said points to redeem various prizes, including paid apps, gift cards, and bigger electronic devices. All right, and one last thing before we conclude, I do have some really awesome coverage for you guys planned soon. Just be sure to stay tuned if you want complete updates on said coverage and you want to be notified more often, such as when I release new videos covering various things like jailbreaking and the forthcoming Apple Watch, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, I'm one of your circles inside of Google+, follow me on Instagram at ICUID and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.